Everyone accepts that nudity is natural, yet we clearly have an odd attitude towards it. I mean, here in Europe, we're very proud of our liberal attitude towards nudity, but if I just whipped out my dick here, I'd probably get in a lot of trouble. I mean, we love seeing others naked, but we're often petrified of being seen naked ourselves. Just picture what you would do if someone walked into your room while you were changing. Oh. You'd probably cover yourself just out of reflex, just as you would snap your hand away from a fire. This shows just how deep-rooted the tradition of clothing is. Nudity is unusual and in the wrong setting an uncomfortable feeling. One of the most common types of nightmare is suddenly appearing butt naked in front of your colleagues. And what seems like a nightmare to some is just a regular day job for others. Art modeling is shit. It's always shit, you know. Um, art modeling never pays very much. I find it in the, I think, in city or typo or whatever, all of these like papers. And, um, and it was just modeling. So I wasn't actually quite sure if it's going to be nude modeling or no. And then like five minutes before the lesson started, the guy was like, okay. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I see, okay, so it's nude modeling. I'm a bit like exhibitionist. Like in party, I would like. <laughs> little flash. I like to provoke. I just like to provoke, you know? And it was a bit like, you want to see a naked body? You like woman naked body? Here is it. I could never model if I was a guy. I'd be like, I would instantly think of the worst thing possible and instantly get erection. I know it would. I remember I was thinking about the stuff I was doing with my boyfriend the night before and I'm like grinning like a Cheshire cat. But nobody knew what I was thinking. With a kind of a sexual erotic uh, content, I just do like this, put it away, and I focus always in the artistic uh, part. I would recommend to everyone to, to, to try it, but not because it's life modeling, just because in general try the things you are scared of and try the things that make you uncomfortable and see how easy they can be. Today we're pretty cool, and artists can get a hold of models to draw from. But throughout history, being a life model was synonymous with being a prostitute. So it wasn't so easy to find a model. So let's start at the beginning. Some of the very first recognized artworks are a collection of Venuses from the Paleolithic era. So it seems that nudity and art have been connected since the dawn of humanity. But let's skip ahead to ancient Greece. In normal society, nudity was associated with barbarians, weakness and being inferior. Slaves were naked. The ultimate form of shame was leaving a dead warrior naked on the battlefield. Only in one realm was nudity okay, sports. Legend has it that once the athlete Dionysus lost his loincloth during a competition, but was so fiercely competitive he just ran on naked. This led to the custom of athletes competing naked during the Olympic Games. So in art, nudity was cool as long as you were showing athletics. Oh, and you had to have a penis. Showing a naked woman was too much. Hmm. The nude male represented a readiness to stand up and fight, even if exposed, symbolizing invincibility. Nude art was focused on strength, youth and physical perfection. But today, you don't really need to have a perfect body to pose naked. Women just think they have all these body issues, or my boobs are too small, or whatever. And you initially you're like, uh... But then you see some of the other models, and there's like some 50-year-old old guy with like, you know, f flabby thighs. And you're like, well, at least I don't look like that. <laughs> I never cared. It was always like, this is what I look like. Hello. Yeah. When I was a child and teenager, somehow I, I had complex about my body. People sometimes or my family said uh, things like oh you are too slim you should eat more or things like that. So when when I am doing performance or naked model it's a way for me also of um, supporting my self-esteem and to like myself more and more and more. So back to Greece. Eventually they got bored of hunky dudes and started sculpting female bodies and for the first time sculptures included sexual admiration. This is one of the first Greek sculptures and was based on the model Phyrene, a famous courtesan. <laughs> She's described as being so beautiful that when she was charged for impiety, the courts acquitted her after seeing her naked body. The statue was so beautiful that, and I quote here, There is a story that a man once fell in love with it, and hiding by night embrace it, and that a stain betrays this lustful act. So basically someone molested the statue. Then, with the death of Alexander the Great, came the Hellenistic period, which is seen as a really raunchy time. Sex parties, orgies, brothels, homosexuality was also totally cool. 
The Greek lifestyle was full of wealth and glamour. Art was a big status symbol, so artists were commissioned by kings and rich men. Nudes were popular and often even erotic. People often confuse nudity with eroticism and these two separate things. It really depends on the context. It's, it's totally not a sexual thing. Like, nobody ever, ever chatted me up. Like, I was modeling in front of art college students and they seemed to be kind of scared of me or in awe, but in the break and kind of want to chat with them and they were all just like, the naked person is coming to talk to us. I don't like it if it's um, erotic, but then you can't avoid it either. There's always something in the room when someone is naked. And, and it makes also the energy nice sometimes if you think, wow, this person, this life model is really attractive. If you completely take away the factor of what attracts you personally, it can be boring also. So, while the Greeks were going nuts, over in Rome, things were a bit different. Nudity was a taboo. It was degrading and reserved for slaves and criminals. I mean, even Christ was crucified naked, which brings us to... Christianity. Well, Adam and Eve felt fine being naked until God forced them to experience shame as a punishment for their sins. And that's basically the church's attitude towards nudity. So, artists weren't allowed to make nude art unless they were depicting mythical stories or supernatural beings. Often these stories were simply a pretext. For example, the seduction of Jupiter was used often basically as an excuse to draw sex. And then came antiquity, where we saw the construction of big shit like the Sistine Chapel. It was still quite hard to get a hold of naked people, women in particular. When Michelangelo painted women, they looked like, well, men with kind of retarded boobies, possibly because of the lack of female models. He was very progressive and set the trend down in Italy to let nudes back in the game. But it wasn't easy because you could only sketch from slaves, whores, or your own lover. Hmm? As a side note, Rubens was known for only using his wife as a model, which explains why all the women in his paintings look basically the same. Therefore, from the Middle Ages to the 15th century, art studios had albums of nude artwork which could be used instead of models. Around this time came the first Floralia, which were festivals and games for whores and commoners, which were especially appreciated for Nudatio Mimarum, a predecessor of the striptease. Art modeling and stripping really don't have very much in common. Okay, so I've done both. Um, I started off as a stripper, actually, when I was 16. Uh, uh, stripping is a lot is a lot of eye contact, um, and it's all about seducing this person. It's all about taking off your clothes slowly and teasing them. That's, that's stripping. Art modeling is about picking an interesting pose and then being able to sustain it for X number of minutes. That's what art modeling is about. You're not a sexual being. You are. You're a vase. You are a cup. I come from a Catholic country, and I was always very upset about the way. Catholic condemn uh, body and sexuality. So for me, it was really a reason to do my part in showing the world that the naked body is not necessarily something demoniac. In the 16th century, Christianity was at it again. Martin Luther mm. was shocked by Rome and pushed to destroy works of nude art. If they were in a good mood, then they would cover the nude artwork with drapery or a biblical fig leaf. Most people now obeyed the censorship rules. If nudes were shown, it was always in the context of death and evil. Just look at The Last Judgment by Michelangelo. All these guys at the top here have their weenies covered, but the damn souls down here don't. But despite the censorship, there was always an underground market for this kind of stuff. In fact, Caravaggio's Victorious Amor was owned by several famous pedophiles. And then came the Renaissance. Artists were using ancient sculptures as a model for nude figures. Anibal Karachi said that this was a stupid second-degree imitation of nature. Following him, art academies spread across Europe, drawing nudes, dissecting bodies, and learning the names of the bones, muscles, nerves, and veins. You can even see it in paintings, how uh, paintings evolved during the Renaissance because, you know, of the study of human bodies. Um, suddenly, was that anatomically correct? Because suddenly they were doing it from people, you know? And thank God, because let's be honest, medieval art is kind of shitty. I mean, what is this? And what? And just, no, what, what's going on here? Only around the 14th century, people began to appreciate life drawing as useful for anatomical sketches in medicine. In fact, da Vinci himself spent some time doing studies on corpses. So the Grand Master himself perfected his craft in part by tracing dead bodies. 
If you're dead, there's no need to be ashamed anymore. And of course, it's so much easier to understand the f architectural structure of a skeleton and muscles without clothing. So this is why there is nudity in modeling. It's essential if you are interested in being able to draw what you see. We know a human body so much better than any other thing. We see any tiny error in, in, the, in a portrait, while we don't see it in a, in the, in a portrait of, of a tree, for example. I'm going to fuck up a lot. Do it. Okay. Like Gustave Courbet and Edouard Manet. All right. And who else but the French, of course, would end up turning the history of the nude into something a little more sexy? Over the next couple of centuries, artists started making sexier and sexier art, which spread all over Europe. Then, in the 19th century, France banned pornography, but the artistic nudes were legal because they established themselves as noble and upstanding. So artists started to fuck with the status quo and blur the lines between art and porn. I mean, people were shocked by paintings showing a model in a studio, a prostitute in the grass, or... <clears throat> because nudity was not mythical or holy, but carnal and real. There was also a change in the audience. Literature, museums and art became more accessible to the middle class, and they weren't only into myths and legends. They wanted to see images of the common man and demanded entertainment. Meanwhile, women were not allowed to pose in almost all public art schools until 1850. And people like this dude, who painted things like this, even prevented women from joining the art academies because he thought that when women work with a live male model, they're going to get too aroused. <laughs> and if you thought the underlying sexism was bad enough, well, that's only because I haven't mentioned the historical racism yet. For example, the Hottentot Venus was a woman taken from South Africa against her own will and exhibited naked in London and Paris. Dress codes, which applied to white women, didn't apply to Africans because they weren't even regarded as fully human. A lot of uh, models are um, new immigrants who are illegal, and so they need to figure out how to make money under the table. The first place where I went, it was 10 euros, but then I also found some really strange ones there. And it was a lot less than 10 euros. But I really needed the job, so I, I did everything I could find. Without my modeling, I wouldn't have survived college because I didn't have any money, so... I had to get naked to pay the bills. For me, I was a teenage runaway, and, you know, so I was doing whatever in order just to like, you know, get around and eat and stuff. It's people who are on the marginal lower end of the economic spectrum. That's what art models have always been. <clears throat> with the rise of photography, artists began using books with nude photos as references to draw from. But these books also spread across the population for other reasons. In fact, during the early 20th century, photographers themselves were fighting to be regarded as artists at all. The use of the nude elevated the status of photography by borrowing the authority from classical art. Porn films replaced erotic art and helped lift the moral fear surrounding nude painting. I mean, people used to get seriously outraged over this stuff. Velázquez's Venus got slashed with a razor and Manet's Olympia was attacked so often they had to hang it out of reach. But over the course of the 20th century, modern art would provoke us so much that right now it's hard to even imagine the controversy that a simple nude painting could cause. So of course the history of the nude doesn't stop there, but contemporary art has copyright, so our journey ends here. So it seems the art world has finally won the battle against censorship, but our attitudes towards nudity are still all over the place. I mean, just listen to this story. I start to have also tattoos, and then I had this one tattoo made, which is a, which is a pussy. And somebody complained about this pussy, but not like it was a student. And, and therefore, they kind of fired me. So basically, artists learning how to draw vaginas were offended by a drawing of a vagina. And I mean, people are still offended by female nipples for some reason, and social media is still heavily policed and censored. I mean, even in this film, technically, I can only show you a drawing of my penis. Yeah, it's really interesting to see the different, uh, the different uh, 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 results of, uh, of different people working uh, in front of the same thing. It's more difficult than you think to hold a position longer. People think you do nothing because you're just lying on the ground or something, or you're standing. If they say, oh, can you hold this for 30 or 45 minutes? I'm like, wow, I really have to concentrate. And every position is um, uncomfortable at some point. One time I did um, a live modeling 
workshop that lasted over a few days and then the last day I got my period and I couldn't even really stand because I was getting dizzy and everything and then I said but maybe I can do a upside down thing so I did this so I, I thought wow well, okay nothing can happen nothing can run out of me and I, I just did a um, headstand like the long poses it's like really uh, a trip I mean and you can drift away and then it can be very bored it can be painful sometimes you have this this little thing always uh, might be say you're naked now <laughs> in front of the people but then I just forget and, and do my thing. There is a, this feeling of power in a way also, because you are there, you are showing yourself and you are the center of, of uh, the attention. I felt very natural and I felt very happy that I can be so natural by being naked in front of uh, people. Uh, actually, it was somehow very liberating. So I have to admit, it was a bit awkward and it did feel like the people were kind of ashamed for me, you know, avoiding more eye contact because I'm the guy getting naked for money. But at the same time, I felt quite powerful in the moment and I definitely felt like I was overcoming a challenge or doing something which I was initially a little afraid of. I mean, it felt a bit like when you push yourself to jump into cold water. 